how and what can be achieved of saluk and dawq without sharia. Uh, in other words, what uh, what do people who don't follow sharia, uh, I'm not sure what the word is, admire, that something, or, exper- or uh, experience anything? Is it only a delusion they experience or imagination? It's not a, necessarily only imagination or only delusion. However, the human being uh, is a threefold reality. The human being is a body, and he's a mind, an intellect, and spirit, a ruh. At the highest level, the uh, ruh is something that is dirraka, that is uh, perceptive, it perceives. And it is made to perceive the ultimate spiritual reality, which is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pure oneness of Allah. And the pure oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ultimate reality, is as much a fact as the fact of anything that exists in the world. The fact fact that Detroit is in Michigan or Houston is in, in Texas or any other fact, any other palpable fact, the divine reality of the unity of Allah is more palpable and more real. And more thabit. and so it's not a condition necessarily, as I understand, that, and from what one can tell from their words, that one be a Muslim in order to realize this divine reality. If one does any of these exercises, for example, these you know the, the yogis laying on nail beds or whatever they may have, if you cut off the nafs, if you cut off the uh, the gratifications of the senses the ruh will be augmented, will increase in its power regardless. And this is why you have people of all different Hindus or whatever, the ascetics who cut off the dunya from themselves, their minds or their arwah become like powerful radio receivers. You know, they can read people's thoughts and they can do this and do that and all these things. This is undeniable as far as I'm concerned, but it's not a matter of their closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the matter of the nature of the ruh the nature of the ruh, that if you cut off the nafs, the, the dunya and so forth, the ruh will become stronger. Just as if you cut off somebody's two legs, their two arms will become stronger. There will be a uh, sort of compensation, compensatory strength uh, caused in the ruh. And because the oneness of Allah is the most palpable and the most factual of facts, it's possible for them to behold this ultimate reality. Those mystics, Meister Eckhart or whoever, that may have Julian of uh, Norwich or any of these other medieval mystics, Rhineland mystics, Far Eastern mystics, English mystics, whatever kind, they can behold this. However, does this benefit them? Does this benefit them? And this is the question. Does it make them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What we believe about them is that they... If they have heard the word of the prophets, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, those that came after the Prophet, they have to believe in him. And if they do not, if they've never heard of him and had no means of hearing from uh, about him, they have an amnesty from Allah subhanahu wa taala. They have an amnesty from Allah subhanahu wa taala. However, two things are noticeable about their spiritual experiences. One is that when it they return, so as to speak, to the level not of the ruh and the level of the tongue, the level of the mudakara that we're talking about. It's not of the ruh, it's of the mind. It's a bridge to the experiences of the ruh. When they return to the level of the intellect and the level of the tongue, they are confined by their own intellect and their own previous education. And if it's an erroneous education about Jesus Christ or this or that, they misinterpret their experience. They don't get it straight. Lono mat, lono inaihi, as Junaid said. The color of the water is the color of the vessel that it's in. And so they may talk about, they have the, the one-time experience, and they return, and they try to express it. They say the mystical body of Christ, or this, or that, or the other, or the Trinity, or something. They get it wrong, and they make mistakes. They misinterpret it. They don't say they have an experience, but when it was reduced to the level of the mind, they don't have the correct aqidah, and so they can't express it correctly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands from us certain matters. 
from the body, he demands that we obey him, ibadah, worship of the outward adoration of Islam, level of Islam. Of the mind, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the intellect, consists in having a sound aqidah, of having a correct belief about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that laysa kamithli hi shayit, there's nothing whatsoever like unto him, wala sharika lah, and that he has no kosher and no associate. And so he's not three, and he's not two, and he's not five. Allah is one. You know. And so when uh, the mystics, when they return to this level, they can't do what is sought of them from Allah subhanahu, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, so it doesn't benefit them at that level. And it doesn't mean that they're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the ultimate spiritual reality is undeniable. And it's palpable, and it's more real than any reality that we know. And so it's very possible that someone who refined their ruh could get a glimpse of it. And this is the second thing that we notice about their, experience, their spiritual experiences. First, that they're misinterpreted or interpreted in the only terms that they mentally possess to interpret it in. Uh, something like the, the six blind man describing the elephant. You know, one had his trunk, and so he just said, oh, it's like a big snake, and one had his uh, foot. And so he said, the ele- an elephant is like a tree trunk. The other had his tail, and so he said, the elephant is like a whip, and so forth. And the other was, had his hand. He says, the elephant is like a wall. You know, and so they can only go according to the knowledge that they have to construe the words and the vocabulary and the education that they have to construe it. And most of them had no education in haqqa'iq. And, which is, and to the second, when, uh, the second point of their mystical experiences is that they're a momentary experience that they spend the rest of their life translating, or a few visions, you know, three, four, five, six. Whereas the people like, uh, like uh, Sidi ibn Ajiba, the people like Ghawth Abu Medin, the people like Abu Hassan Shazadi, their experience was continuous. It was permanent. And it was the seeing of the very being through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's no comparison. There's no comparison in the, in the, uh, in the, the sense that they made of their experience. And there's no comparison in the, in the strength of the experience itself. As for the possibility of what's, uh, of a mystic, so, so-called mystic of another religion, seeing the ultimate reality, this is very possible. Because the ultimate reality is undeniable, as we said. And, but it doesn't, ba- you know, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is felicity? Felicity is knowing, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one is not, and so without, the sharia is the way of perfection. And the sharia is the way to realize something and to benefit from this experience. The fact that Allah is there is of no benefit to Iblis. Because he doesn't, isn't one of the people who's tried to benefit from that fact. And the fact that the ultimate spiritual reality is there is not of a great deal of benefit to someone who really knows it's there. You know, so this is the difference between the, there's no, quite, there's no comparison between the Islamic mystics, between the Sufis, and between those that have a momentary experience because they cut out the matter of the nafs and the matter of the, of the sensory. No comparison between them. But yes, they experience something. And also of those who know Islam and experience something, and then they leave the Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made his own being, and this, this experience, this moment, the experience that they have, a reason for leading them astray. And the law can make anything the cause of anything, and depending on whether he loves someone or hates someone. You know. And so this is, it's a warning to us. Their behavior is a warning to us. Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah rabbil alameen. We've reached one more question. I don't know which questions are here is throwing away down there, but... <clears throat> President Nixon's telethon where they sent the questions up from the audience and then they would tear them all up in a booth beside the stage and give him his own questions. (laughs) 